So, secondary battleships are kind of my thing. Uh, this is my favorite part about this game, is getting up in people's faces and brawling it out and having these fun, intense, close-range fights. So, I wanted to make a video here on how I position when attempting to brawl. Because, as we all know, that the majority of games at Tier 10 are pretty stagnant and stale. Uh, they involve pretty much spamming high explosive from max range, and I don't think people really know how to push in anymore because as soon as you push slightly farther ahead than any of your teammates, well, you're the number one focus. Especially when you're in a giant ship like a curve first. Um, so positioning wise, I'm gonna say 95% of the time, you should always go to the side you spawn at. I say this all the time on my stream, and just in general, it's the best strategic decision to go to the side you spawn at, okay? That you're put there for a reason, okay? And you need to support the cap that you spawned at. So in this game, as you can see, I'm not going to the side I spawn at. And the reason you don't do that is when there's a CV in the game, okay? I tend to get focused by CVs quite a lot in my secondary battleships, um, probably because it's a battleship, and especially when it's a Kerr first or an Ohio, you're generally specced into secondaries, not fire prevention and dam basics of survivability. So a CV wants to focus you because they're likely to get more damage off of you. So you want to stick with your team as much as you can, especially in the beginning of the game. People aren't particularly happy with me with doing this in this game, but if I go south, I die. It's just straight up. I have 105,000 health, full HP, everything. I will die if I go to the south. Because the CV will see that. A lone battleship all by itself, without any support other than a Zhao and a gearing, but the gearing's pretty far ahead. So that's nothing to a CV. So you, you have to live, obviously, if you're going to brawl it out in a secondary ship. So that's the one time we're gonna not go to the side we spawn at, okay? So first, let's talk about early game. Generally, you're going to the side you spawned at, so I spawned at C, so I'm coming up to C here. Um, as you can see, I'm pushing quite aggressively here, simply because there's no carrier, and one of their, there's only one DD, so I can be quite aggressive here to get into position. Um, here I make a mistake, we're going to get into that, but generally at the very beginning of the game, you want to push up if you can. Uh, we're, we'll get into the things you should look for in a bit, but you're looking for islands next to capture zones. People are going to try and push into capture zones because that's the whole point of the game is to capture that zone and get the points and they'll take out. So if you want to brawl people, you need to get close to the objective essentially. And as you can see, we've done that. We're up close and personal with the enemy. However, I just make a big error in popping out around this corner, flat broadside, and then continuing to sit broadside in front of these guys. Now, I know it seems like I'm angled. You know, I've got nearly a, probably a 35 degree angle to this Vladivostok and similar angle to the Georgia at this point, but that's not really enough in a Palmer. <laughs> the ship is, does not have good broadside armor at all and has giant superstructure. So I end up dying here simply because I didn't just bow in on that island and hold a corner. But the important part here is that you're trying to use islands to push up and you're gonna see that in a lot of games here where if I'm pushing at the beginning of the game, I'm using islands to one, block concealment and two, block shots from the enemy. The whole point is to, if you can, push up undetected and surprise people. And if you can't do that, at least block the shots that are going to be coming in from people. So I think it's pretty important to note that most of the time you just can't push up in the very beginning of the game because as you can see, you're going to get a shot at by like half the team. You have five people targeting you right now. Like I think it was up to six at one point too. So you can't do that. and. Um, this was obviously a mistake, but the next clip I'm going to show you is also a mistake, but I think it illustrates the point of not pushing when you shouldn't. So now I want to show you a mistake example. Here at the beginning I'm playing well, 
I'm pushing up to an island near the cap. I'm trying to isolate the fight from the enemy team. You know, the people that spawn north of B are possibly coming over to C, and I'm making sure they can't shoot at me, which is good. Um, I'm trying to get close to the cap to support my DD. I'm trying to get close to maybe, you know, brawl some people eventually if the situation arises. But, you know, the Hindenburg's running away. And, I mean, this Bismarck is probably going to turn out and run away as well. So, there's not really much for me to do at C. Um, so, we're going to look at B. But, I want to show you a mistake I'm about to make. It's a big one. Um, there are... DD's still alive in this game, and I don't know where the Z46 is. He was last spotted in A, but, I mean, they've capped that already, so where is he? Could he be, you know, on the one line farming the battleship? Sure, but he also could be coming back towards B, and I don't know this. So, pushing in when you don't really know where the enemy DD's are at is maybe not the best idea. So, that's kind of the first thing to look for if you're thinking of, oh, three things to look for before pushing would be where are the enemy DDs and how strong are they with torpedo power because you don't want to push into DDs with good torps. Um, is there a CD in the game that's focusing you or on your flank that could very easily focus you? Probably don't want to push into that. Um, and last of all is are there are the ships just kiting away from you like bows pointed away ready to run? It's not easy to push into ships that are going to just run away from you because you're always going to be at a disadvantage in those situations because the more they run, the more they kite you into them, the more you're going to get caught in a crossfire. So here I should have stopped behind the island on my right. I, it was fine to push into B because my DDs are here, I'm supporting them, I'm providing a bit of AA, all that stuff, but pushing any farther here, sure I'm getting some damage, I'm getting to, you know, secondary things, but you see the CVs here, that's an issue. The other problem is, well, there's a Brindisi about to show up on the left, and a Monty on my left, and on my right, I have a Monarch, Bismarck, Yamato, and Hindenburg. Hindenburg's about to show himself eventually, spamming high explosives in the back at me. So, this is a bad push, and I realize this here now, how much of a mistake I've made. And I would like to note that just a few short minutes ago, or less than a minute ago, I was on nearly 80,000 HP healing up towards 90 and now we're on 35,000 HP so mistakes are brutal when you put, are trying to push in a battleship if you go too soon which this was way too soon big mistake on my part um, well sure we get some damage you're gonna use your damage control your heals not gonna be up you won't have hydro it you're just kind of dead I mean here I'm just stuck on an island for a long time so I'm not able to maneuver but it doesn't really matter because I'm caught in such a massive crossfire that this Hindenburg and Yamato have my broadside and in front of me I've got a Montana and a Brindisi and the CVs around and I mean there you can we're just dead <laughs> so I wanted to show a clip that didn't go well just to give you an idea that it it's hard it's really hard to do so early game pushing is hard but Mid to late game is really when this strategy gets really strong. As you can see in this match, um, we're losing this game quite badly. We're getting pushed into a corner, we've lost C. We're not really getting A because this Bismarck will die to the Shimakaze that's flanking him. So I need to make a play to win this game, right? And well, Ohio's a great ship for that, especially when you know that their Shimakaze is not gonna be anywhere near you and their Kagero's not going to be anywhere near you. So you don't really have to worry about torpedoes. So you can play the islands, like I have been telling you to, to get in close with people. And then your whole goal is to outplay them positionally. Because up close, it's not really aiming that you're doing. It's the whole positioning thing. So here I'm pushing up, trying to get shots in this Yamato, who's sitting broadside behind an island. But we can actually lob over the island with a lot of these shells. And I think this clip really illustrates what you can do if you know how to position your ship. So it's not the end of the world to be caught in a crossfire. And I know that seems weird, but if you angle your ship properly and get right in between that crossfire, you can have a pretty good time. Because as you can see, we're about to be stuck between a Soyuz, Neptune, Kerr first, uh, Bismarck, 
right? Like, we're, we're pushing right into this, and a Shimakaze on our flank too, so I need to run from the Shima. That, pr that much is obvious, and we're kind of pushing into B a little bit, but eh, they're not going to do too great there. <laughs> so, I think the biggest thing is to keep an eye on where the biggest threats are for you. So the big threats for me here are, well, the Kerr first on my broadside, but fortunately he's not looking at me. And of course, I was I was thinking the Neptune might be really close by for torpedoes, but we don't really have to worry about that. That's why I popped the plane, by the way, so I could see potentially over an island so that maybe I would be safe from that Neptune. And you can see a close range dispersion is pretty kind. Now here we're turning out because we don't know where the Shima is and it's very possible he's right there on his way back to come torp me as I come out of this gap. So we're not pushing through there as well as the Neptune torpedoes. So we're, we're just trying to think about the most likely plays from the enemy ships and position accordingly. So the important thing is again using islands. The whole, the whole brawling perspective is you have to use islands to isolate shots and isolate ships from their friends and that kind of thing so you can see we're using the island in the middle of b to isolate the cur first or keep the cur first from shooting us while we deal with the soyuz now this could have been a lot trickier because you know the soyuz doesn't have to come across broadside to us and just gift us free damage but the point still stands that here I'm caught between two enemy battleships, but I'm angled to both of them because of my position. Now sure, the CV could have played better and launched torpedo planes and gotten a free strike on me because I'm locked in now to these angles, And but that doesn't happen and we can actually stay relatively safe despite being caught between two enemy battleships. This is a really, really strong position to be in because you have your whole team supporting you, generally. And these guys can't really deal that much damage to you. Because we're trying to time the curve first reload, essentially is what I was doing. Because I showed a broadside there, but I knew he had just shot, so I could show broadside to the curve first to get all my guns off on the sights. It's positioning like this that is so fun for me. This whole outplaying the enemy kind of thing is just amazing. So with this clip, I want to show you how I go about this brawl. This one is tricky because I am going to the weak side on a game with CVs in it. And normally I would say you shouldn't do this, but I see a Minotaur, which is an incredibly good AA ship, as well as another Ohio. And this Ohio looks like he's charging. And I want to support this because obviously, hey, I'm down for it for a brawl let's go right and um it's a little bit tricky on how to play this because there's gonna be a lot of the enemy team down here it's, it's gonna be a lot and we don't see it all yet but it's three versus well maybe four with the nevsky in the back versus i don't know like six seven maybe at least so and the carrier comes down here every once in a while too so I want to point out that you can go to these sides, but it requires very special circumstances where the islands are really good, like really good for you to brawl with and take those 1v1s. You're, you're trying to isolate, just like I said earlier. It's, it's all about not getting shot at by six people. <laughs> you know, it's one, maybe two people is the maximum. So. You see, I'm shooting at this Kaba because we can full pen him. And getting a Kaba out early is huge because eventually you're going to have to focus on the battleships or cruisers shooting at you, and you kind of have to ignore a DD like a Kaba. But early on, it's not a huge deal to just ignore battleships that are angled to you. Um, so here, we're pushing in. Minotaur's got a great spot to cover us with AA, with Hydro, that kind of stuff. but. We're pushing straight into a Smolensk Kerfirst Kremlin with an Ohio on our flank and a booster nearby with a Kaba trying to flank us. So how are we going to do this? Well, 
I have to turn out. We can. Like, I'm risking a shot here by the Ohio. Sure, he gets a Citadel. That's expected, but we, it's worth the HP trade to turn out here because if I stay stuck in here, I'm going to die. And this other Ohio decides to keep going, and that's a mistake because there's just too much pressure here. So what I'm doing here is this island is very, very nice for me to get you know, side shots on this curve first, or to duck behind in the case that that Smolensk decides to focus me. Now, it's likely they're just all going to focus on the Ohio, so I need to use this opportunity to get out, essentially. I need to not be in a position where I'm going to get focused down super hard like our Ohio is. As you can see, he's well under half health already, and I'm near half health as well, but I do have uh, a heal coming up in 14 seconds. This is the great part about Ohio. Georgia, Massachusetts, you always have a heal. So, my Ohio buddy is going down. Our, we have a DD coming here, which will help a lot. But I'm trying to get out to this flank because, as you can see, the whole enemy team is very focused on the Ohio and the cap. So, there's not really much out here other than the Kaba. So, I kind of have a 1v1 with the Kaba. And at these kind of ranges, if you're a good shot, the Kaba is going to get hurt real bad. <laughs> it's it's going to hurt real bad. So, it's good for me to take this fight early because it's likely that a cruiser or something, a battleship potentially, will come around at, the, at some point. So I'm kind of angled away. I'm trying to make sure that I don't get spammed by a Smolensk over the islands because that is possible. As you can see, that's Wooster and Smolensk spamming me, so I really need to leave. We get another full pan on the Kaba, which is good, but I need to go. and. The important thing here is I don't go and hide too far. My goal is to catch them as they're trying to push up to B because that's their entire goal, right? Like, there's not much here from our team. They're trying to get up towards where the bulk of my team is at C and put them in a crossfire. So my goal is to just slow them down and take opportune shots at broadsides, essentially, is what I'm trying to do. And this little gap here between these two islands is perfect for that because I'll be angled away from the whole enemy team and I'll have, you know, probably some decent ships within my secondary range because Ohio secondaries are really, really good at starting fires. You know, they're really accurate, hit the superstructure, that kind of thing, deal damage. So we're risking a bit of broadside on the Ohio just to get into this position here. And this is going to be really, really, really strong for our team. As you can see, <laughs> getting onto the flank really helps out this kind of thing a lot so I really love this part of the game where you're up close and you're just positioning on people you're just out maneuvering them um, the Wooster is gonna die as well and the important thing to note here is I didn't just full charge in but I also didn't play at the back of the map because I could have played where the Nevsky is playing on the map right now but that's not too fun so maps like this with lots of islands and opportunities to push in help a ton for me to have fun with this game. I find a lot of the maps these days are designed in such a way that it makes it nearly impossible to push because you don't have islands like this that can block line of sight and line of fire, right? The reason this works is because these islands are too tall for the minute, or not the Minotaur, sorry, the Wooster and the Swans to spam over. You look at an island like uh, Greece, I believe, where all the islands are super short Sure, they block vision, which is perfect for a HE spam ship, but they're so low that they can just spam over it, and you're never going to spot them. So islands like this that provide actual solid cover, I think are really good for the game because they allow for interesting positions like this to be viable. So now I'll push out, but I'm going to try and make sure I'm angled because now you'll see I slowed down to wait there, but I'm pushing out now because I'm putting these guys in a crossfire because I have a Nevsky and a Minotaur in the north helping me. So if these guys bow into me, well, Nevsky and Minotaur AP is crushing. Like it is absolutely brutal to push into. And I mean, of course, Ohio secondaries are no joke either. So that's gonna constantly be taking some damage. So either they give broadside to me or my team, which is great. And you see my Minotaur is already taking advantage of this and put some damage in. So using your teammates to help you and to play off of is really important as well. If you just kind of go in on your own, that's pretty much never gonna work. <laughs> it's 
Sometimes it can, but pretty much never. You'll see I'm trying to keep angled well, you know, kiting away. I'm trying to stay outside the curve for secondary range, just because I don't need to take that extra pressure at the moment. So, and then of course I'm just trying to take opportune shots on broadside ships. It's very basic as far as aiming is concerned. You don't really have to worry about that. Something I would like to touch on though, in this game as this wraps up, I've kind of said all I'm gonna say about these islands in this match. The reason I'm taking a fighter instead of a spotter plane is because I feel pretty confident in shooting over islands without the spotter plane, as well as I'm trying to brawl in this ship. I'm not trying to sit at max range, so I'm likely not gonna get use out of the range upgrade of the spotter plane. The main thing for me is I hate when CVs get multiple drops off on me. There's nothing you can do to stop one drop. They're always gonna get it, but I find the fighter plane can help me deal with multiple drops from a single CV. Now this clip is very important. This is how you win or lose games. This is the difference between someone who has a maybe 65% win rate or someone with a 55% win rate. Knowing how to push in and win games is hard. And it won't work all the time, as you've seen in this video. I make mistakes all the time. But knowing how to push in and use islands to be the most effective you possibly can be in the end game scenarios is critical to raising your win rate. And this goes for all battleships, not even secondary ones. In fact, this goes for all ships, not even um, just battleships. Cruisers, destroyers, they can all get incredibly aggressive and use their HP as a resource. Battleships just have more HP to use. Um, so this game, I mean, this map is horrible at the beginning. You have to wait for people to die in order to start pushing in in this map because you can't... You just can't push in when the whole enemy team is just kind of sitting there waiting for it. <laughs> when there's just no cover to push in with. So I've been sniping this game. You can see we're at the 10 minute mark in the game. So it's been pretty boring so far, but we're losing, obviously. Um, sure, we have two caps to their two caps, but we are kind of just down on HP a little bit. But the main thing is our position is horrible. We have horrible position. Um, we're about to get blocked up here in the decap, right? We have nothing at C and they're pushing in from B, A area. So we're about to get flanked and we're about to lose our mid cap as well. So we have to push. It doesn't matter at this point if we lose or not. Like if I die now, it doesn't matter because you just have to push at a certain point. Otherwise you're gonna lose the game regardless. So it doesn't matter if you push in and die needlessly because the game will end and you'll just have full HP at the back and you won't have tried to even win the game. So here it's tricky because there's a Montana on my side, there's a Des Moines spamming me from max range, there's a Stalingrad locking me in, bow into him, and a Riga also spamming at me with high explosive. And this Riga, well, you saw he got quite lucky earlier with only one overpen. Sometimes that happens and I've actually got a clip after this one talking a little bit about expectations and that but for this clip we have to get in a position to contest the the c cap in the middle it, it's critical i can't stay here obviously because i'm gonna die so my entire goal is to get to the island where the des moines is i want to be on that island so i can contest the freddy pushing into c because that's the important thing these ships that are like this des moines spamming from their spawn or behind their spawn he doesn't matter the only thing he's doing now is he's killing me that's useful to his team. But if I'm in a position where he can't shoot me, he's essentially useless and out of the game. So our goal is to not make a ship at the back of the map useful. So that's where, again, islands come into play. Now, I do get lucky here because this Montana goes behind the island and he decides not to shoot at my broadside ship. And we angle kind of just in time to not give too much broadside to the Freddy for his second salvo into us. So we know here that a st this Stalingrad's going to push forward and put a shot into us. I'm trying to angle a bit to him, but I can't angle fully. Otherwise, I'm just going to round the island and be in a bad spot. So I'm accepting, I'm guessing around 20, 25,000 damage, maybe even upwards of 30 to give to this guy. I'm accepting that. So 
There you go. We take 20. 21 or something like that. And now we have to fight this Freddy. But we're in a position that's safe from the Montana in the north, the Stalingrad, and the Des Moines, and the Riga, and the Montana pushing in. So we're in a super strong position here based on the enemy's deployment. Now, sure, the Venezia and... Um, I guess not the Venezia. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> Thunder, or the Vanguard could have just spammed us with AG, or the uh, CV could have gone after us more. But that doesn't change that this is a strong position for us because it holds on to our cap. We don't just give the Freddy a hit up for free. Because it's possible that Freddy caps out without us pushing in like this. Now, the important thing to know is how I'm going to use my heals. You see how I'm pretty low? And, well, always be aware of your surroundings because sometimes there's holes in islands. But healing is oftentimes, you just use it on cooldown when you're this low. But I don't always do that because the maximum amount you can heal changes depending on what type of damage you've taken. Obviously, if you take Citadel damage, you can only heal like 10% of that. So it's not worth popping a heal as soon as you take a Citadel because you'll only heal like a thousand damage out of your, well, in this case, 17,000 HP heal. So this next heal, I'm pretty sure I don't actually have the ability to heal too much after this one. So I'm going to save it. Actually, not this one. Never mind. But it, st it still change it doesn't change the fact that you should save heals when they don't give you a full heal if you're down to your last amount, of, if you're down to your last heal. Because once you start taking damage, you can pop that heal, and then some of the damage that you're taking is going to be healed back. That's kind of the point I was trying to get at here. But this is a really nice play to use islands like this because you can have breaks. You can just back up and take a break, right? You see how I've taken a break, my heals come back up a little bit, right? We're at 38 seconds now on the heal cooldown. You know, if I had just stayed out there, I would have probably died to this Montana and Riga who were pushing in on me before my heal comes up. Now, really frustratingly, he gets a huge hit into my superstructure, so... Angling sometimes just doesn't matter, but using islands to get a reprieve from enemy fire is huge. Being able to take a small break to get your heals off in ships that aren't Ohio, Georgia, Massachusetts, like, they're just so much better at brawling than any other ship just because of the heal. It's crazy how much better that it makes it. You live so much longer than you should just because you can get through all your healing uh, compared to any other battleship. The 80 second cooldown is so long and it's fine for sniping battleships but if you're trying to brawl it's horrible. So that's why you have to use islands even more in ships like Kerfers, Chikishima, anything else. Anything other than the American secondary line or premium line. Unfortunately those ones are all premiums but as you can see our team is slowly turning this one around um, but the important thing here is I think our position baited a lot of the enemy team into trying to deal with us and it's gotten them killed because they've pushed up close to me and I have some fire support from my sniping team. So I think this position probably won us this game and to get into this position was incredibly challenging because as you saw we took a ton of damage to get into here but it was ultimately worth it. Now in this clip, I want to talk about expectations. When you're brawling in a battleship, you expect your guns to deal a certain amount of damage to a ship. You have to assume that a broadside ship at close range is going to take a Citadel and play based off of that. I, that's how I play. I play, if somebody gives me broadside at close range, they're taking a Citadel they're, or they're taking big damage, right? And generally that's true and generally that's how I make plays. You know, so this Wooster coming out like this, I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, he's full health, but if I just stay here, I can put huge damage into this guy. And, you know, he'll be angled, but we can still hit the stepped uh, citadel. But sometimes dispersion does that. So 
The problem with brawling is you make decisions and pushes based on what you think can happen. Now, I didn't think I was going to kill that guy, but I thought I'd at least half his health. It's a cruiser at six kilometers. But, I mean, we got the worst dispersion I've ever seen out of an Ohio at that time. So, and now he's flat broadside grounded on an island. So I'm assuming a citadel, right? I don't think that's unreasonable. Maybe not to kill him, but at least put him low. No, actually, that is unreasonable. So it can be very frustrating to play these secondary brawling ships because you end up losing a ton of health because you put yourself in a position like this one in front of a Wooster at six kilometers who's gonna end up doing around 40,000 damage to you with fires and AG in the time it gets you to do three salvos. It's really frustrating for me and that's why I can't play this game for too long in this kind of playstyle because stuff like this happens where there's just no reason that he should be alive but he is. And that's kind of the issue with this game that I have, that there's not enough consistency to make these strategic plays off of. I love the repositioning and outpositioning and outmaneuvering of your the enemy, but this game doesn't always reward you for it. And that's the only big problem with secondaries and brawling battleships, really. Now, I'm sure a lot of the time when you've tried to push in, you've ran into a destroyer who just YOLOs at you. And in a secondary battleship, you don't ever want to take the shot right now. Like right here, you don't shoot. You put your secondaries on him and you wait. Patience is key here. You'll see I've switched to HE. I run expert loader on these builds for this exact reason. When you're rushed by a DD, you need to clap them out when they turn to get their torps off. So you'll notice I'm going in a nice, straight, predictable line. He's going for his corpse right now. We shoot, we slow down, we turn in. Drastically changing our course. And when he turned out, we ensured we hit nine HE shells. And of course, that's going to kill him. And we dodge the torps. So that's how you deal with a DD pushing you. Um, it helps that this guy didn't wait until I, he got right up close to me so he couldn't miss. Um, but... At worst, you're gonna trade, and at the end of a game like this, that's okay, but I tend to do this all the time because the secondaries apply a ton of pressure. I actually did around 8,000 damage to that gearing in that short amount of time my secondaries were on him. So that's how you deal with a close range kind of DD fight. Now in this clip, I wanna talk a bit about uh, Georgia specifically. This ship is so fast that you can actually get into some pretty crazy positions. And it's not a misplay, even though it would be a misplay in, say, like, I don't know, an Ohio or something like that. Um, or GK especially. Ohio's special too because it gets the fast heal. Um, you'll see a lot of the time that I'll play more aggressively with my uh, American premium secondary battleships. Simply because the heal cooldown is so much faster so I can just heal more damage essentially. So here, without a lot of support, and I mean, we're already seeing two tier nine battleships coming here. Um, I'm just charging. I'm just gonna go to this island that's in front of me here. And I'm just kinda gonna post up and try and take 1v1. So the goal when you're playing a secondary battleship is to use islands to isolate fights. That is the number one thing you could possibly do when brawling because Obviously, two ships, no matter how good they are, are going to beat one ship, generally. And especially when it's the same class and the same tier, right? A Soyuz Iowa shooting at me is obviously going to beat me shooting at one of them. Um, so we need to keep this Soyuz from shooting us, as well as the Tashkan, because obviously HE spam is going to get me killed very quickly because I'll be forced to use a damage control and then... Maybe a turret gets knocked out, so my DPM gets lower. All these things are really bad for me. So I'm using this island to isolate right now the Tashkent and the Soyuz. And you'll see the other island is isolating the Palmer. So I'm kind of okay with just sitting here at the moment. I'm aware that the Tashkent is turned around and could possibly flank me. So I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful with that. Um, but for now, we're in a pretty good position. Assuming the Iowa doesn't get incredibly lucky on our superstructure, 
Because that is the thing that can happen when you're fighting other battleships. They can just somehow 15k you through your superstructure because they get a bunch of full pets. Which is pretty annoying. Um, I don't really like that mechanic at all, actually. It, it seems... I don't know. It's just not great. But there you see me painting the map because I know that's coming. And we took quite a bit of damage there, but our heals are so fast that we can just stay in the fight for so long. So... Here, I really need to isolate this Pomern from the Iowa. I don't want to be eating that 15,000 damage through the superstructure every 30 seconds. So, we're gonna go forward. This also has the added bonus of keeping me slightly more safe from the Tashkan torpedoes that are more than likely coming through here. I've got a Brindisi behind me, so I'm pulling up so that hopefully, as we eat another 12,000 damage through our superstructure from the Iowa, I'm hoping that the Tashkan won't be a problem for me at this point. So our, the Pomeran's almost dead because he pulled out in front of my entire team and well he died for it. So this is how critical it is to isolate fights. So for that Pomeran what he should have done, he should have posted up on that island and just taken that 1v1 fight with me. He should have gone Valiant too. Despite him you know losing half his DPM then his secondaries would have just torn me up, especially if he had IFHE with them, because they would all pen 32 millimeters. But he didn't, and he paid for it, because, well, obviously you're going to lose when you're sitting broadside in front of three ships. And this is something that takes a lot of practice to not just, just full send into people. And it's, it's hard, because not every map has good islands like this. And sometimes you can't get to these islands. For example, if I was in a Georgia in a tier 10 game, I probably wouldn't have gone to this island. Because tier 10 ships are so much scarier than tier 9 ships. Um, the support ships are just that much better. That there's probably going to be a ship, maybe, you know, north of B that can shoot me. Because they just have more range and that kind of thing. So, you have to look at not only the tier that you're at, but... Um, what islands what islands are available to you on each map because some maps just suck for brawling and sometimes you just can't until late game and you'll see that in a bit but i tend to on bad maps just kind of play as kind of a sniper role just a regular battleship role on certain maps for the first you know 10 minutes of the game because you just can't push in on some maps it you have to wait until the number of people in the game has decreased. As soon as there's less people shooting at you, the better. And then you can open water push. So here I'm pushing because obviously we've dealt with, pretty much dealt with the Soyuz. And I think that we can get this Tash Can because I'm a fast battleship, right? I can keep up with it. So that's kind of using the island there. From then on, the rest of this game wasn't actually too big a deal. Actually, there was something to note in the rest of this game. Not brawling necessarily, but for those of you that watched my aiming guide, um, we're going to hit another blind shot, and somebody's not going to be too happy with me about it. Um, this guy's boxed in by the border and the islands in front of them. There's only one place he can go, and that's a full turn to the right. So we just predict where he's going to go and shoot there. And, you know, maybe I'm lucky to hit two shells there, but... Uh, <laughs> blind fire. Okay, <laughs> as you see, he is not the most happy about it. So I hope this was a helpful guide um, on how to brawl in a battleship and maybe how to position your ship at closer ranges. Now this can be used for cruisers and that too, but maybe I'll make a more specific guide on cruisers or in the future, but brawling secondary battleships are something I love, and I think positioning them is really hard, but it can be very rewarding, and that's how you get some of these massive crazy games that I've had, like that 400k uh, Ohio game, which is up on my channel, by the way, if you want to watch, but yeah, I just want to thank you guys for watching and all the support that you guys have shown. Um, I really just appreciate it, and I hope you have a good day.